All right, next example I'm going to show you, we're still using money. I'm going to look at a savings account here. And I mean, if you know, you'd be surprised how much money you can get in a savings account or any kind of account uh, just by saving some extra dollars here or there. And you know, this seems like a ridiculous amount, but it really isn't, to be honest with you, if you really save well. And we'll talk about those different strategies this year. Uh, but let's say we've got a $21,000 savings account. And the nice thing about savings accounts is they pay you to put your money in there. So on my savings account, I get a 1.35% annual interest. Okay, It doesn't sound like very much. Uh, and it's, it's not a lot, but you know it's nice because it's free money. Now, here's the thing that gets a lot of people. This doesn't have to do anything with percent of a number, but it's just something to keep in mind. This percent that they'll put on a savings account, that's for the entire year. Okay, if I made 1.35 percent every month, you know, 1.35 percent, you know, might be an extra couple hundred dollars every month just to put my money in there. That's not how it works. Um, it annually means every year. So to find out what I would get for a month, I would just have to divide this total by 12. Uh, and if I did 1.35 percent divided by 12 months, I'm actually getting per month, uh, and I'll just round this off, but I'm getting 0.11 percent uh, back on my money every month. Now, it's not 11 percent. It's just it's it's basically one tenth of a percent. And actually, I can just change it to this just to make it easy. 1.0. Uh, I'll do just one, I'll just do point 0.1. One tenth of a percent I get every month. Let's see how much I would actually get for having my money in there for one month. Uh, I'll take my entire total I've got in my savings account and I'm going to times that by this as a decimal. Now, it has a decimal in it, but don't confuse that with being a decimal. Right now it's a percent. We still have to do the same thing we did before, move it two to the, let's see, one, two, two to the left. Okay, so my number is now going to be 0 .001. Uh, 1 thousandth is what that would be. So I need to times that by uh, 1 thousandth to see how much money uh, I would have in my savings account after this month. And that's not what it's going to tell me. This is going to tell me just how much I gained. I'm going to have to do something after that. So I'm going to do $21,000 times uh, my one-tenth of a percent which would be 0.001, and my total comes out to be 21. So this is how much money I gained on interest just by having this $21,000 in there. They just handed me 20 bucks. I didn't have to do anything, okay? So that's nice. So now when I need to update my total as far as how much I have in my savings account, I just take what I had before, add it to this, and I would have $21,021. The next month, we'd do it all over again. Uh, I would take the amount that I have now, times it by my one-tenth of a percent, or 0 .001, and I get a new amount to add to what I had before, and it just keeps adding on and adding on and adding on. So it's like uh, making money for free, which is pretty cool. All right, next example I've got here is uh, with the one one computers, and you know you guys will get these next year. Um, Eighty-two percent of students at Grundy Center have internet at their house, okay, um, and a hundred percent can get it whenever they want to because all you have to do is come by the school and you can get internet. Go to the library, you can get internet, uh, but as far as in their homes, eighty-two percent goes. So how many kids is that? The one thing you have to know is you have to know how many kids there are all together. Uh, so we'll just say that there's 320 students all together in the uh, in in the schools. Okay. So if I want to figure out how many kids have internet at their house, I just need to do 82% of 320. Uh, so if I have 320, I can just multiply that by 82% as a decimal, which would be 0 0.82. Uh, and if I do 320 times 0.82, I get this, 262.4. Okay, now, we got to think about if we're reporting something on individuals or people. Okay, we're not going to want to write this because you can't have 0.4, you can't have four-tenths of a person.
Okay. So we would probably just round this. If we were going to report this to like the school board or report this to somebody, we would say that uh, 262 students have internet. Now, on the flip side, we can figure out how many students do not have internet a couple of ways. Uh, I could just simply take my total students, which is just 320, uh, minus my uh, 262, uh, and what would that be? That would be 40, 60, 58, okay. 58 students. Or I could take 320 and multiply it by the percent of students who do not have the internet. 82% of students have internet, which means that the other chunk of students who don't is 18%. Uh, so that's going to be 0.18. Uh, those two numbers, 18% and 82%, add up to the full total of 100% of the students. So if I do 320 times 0.18, 18%, uh, I get 57.6. And again, if I was reporting this to the school board, I would want a nice round number of kids uh, so I probably want to round that 6 means I could round that up, uh, so I can make that 58 as well. And if I add up my totals, uh, my 58 and my 262 that represent both groups, internet, non-internet, it should give us the total number of all the students put together. All right, last one I'll show you here, uh, another example. You know, there are just so many examples to use this where I, I could make, you know, 20 videos and show you all the different problems. But hopefully by this time you kind of get the point where if you have a percent and you have a whole total, uh, you can find, you can use that to find a percent of a number. So let's say we got a 56 question test and Franklin is not doing very well. He really wants to pass uh, so he can play football um, next fall. And if he doesn't, he can't. So he knows that, or his teachers let him know that he needs a 78% on this to pass the class. The teacher didn't tell him how many questions that is, so you guys got to figure it out. Now, he may not be able to do this if he's not very good at math, but you guys can help him out. 78% um, he needs out of the 56 questions. So all we would have to do is we would take the 56 total, the whole thing, 56 questions, and multiply it by that as a decimal which would be 0.78. If I do 56 uh, questions uh, at 78% or 0.78, I come up with this, 43.68, okay? So he needs 43 and 68 hundredths uh, questions correct to be able to pass the class to get 78%. Now, you've got to think about this in real terms here, depending on what the teacher decides to do. Um, you know, if he gets 43, he's not going to pass. If he gets 44, he is going to pass. So in this situation, if you were presenting this or giving him the information, you would want to inform him that, hey, you better get 44 questions right or you're not going to get that 78% because 43 is going to be too small. Uh, so if you had to answer this question, you would want to tell Franklin, uh, you need a 44 out of 56 if you want to make this happen.